And next up, we are going to be joined by the lovely Gabo Studios. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, yeah, I didn't I didn't prepare a slide or slides or anything, um, but I have things to show and chat about. But I guess hi, my name is Gabo. And for the last like decade-ish, I've kind of contributed um sort of I have a background as a designer and I totally have a day job outside of like open hardware, but I've contributed diagrams and like visual communications to help the general public um, understand um, some open source hardware projects. Um, but right now I'm kind of, uh, um, I'm working on my own art and I'm here to talk about the art. So on here, oops, yeah. So these aren't post-it notes. These are, um, these are different swatches of silk and cotton blends of bacterial dye. So right now I'm uh, working out of a lab in Tokyo called BioClub Tokyo. I'm kind of like a resident researcher. And I am I know like microbial pigments are a thing um, that uh, already exists and a lot of people already know about, but I'm looking at microbial, uh, growing microbial pigments and making enough pigment for myself as a craft person to like scale, not just like to have enough to dye a couple shirts, but to make 50 to 100 shirts at a time. So that means eventually I have to look into bioprocessing, uh, which means I have to build a bioreactor and um, things related uh, to that equipment. Um, so yeah, these are like my swatches. I'm going to probably go into different uh, colors. And then um, for bioreactor stuff, um, or just like uh, observing cultures, like one open source tool that I really like, which is a on uh, Arduino Shield, is the White Box T1, and um, it's by Atlas Scientific, I think. But there's a lot of um, really nice probes that it comes with to give you really beautiful readings. Um, and I've been doing some experimentations by taking the data and putting it into a touch designer to kind of give fun uh, visual readouts. Um, I've been finding that uh, touch designer has been really fun, not just for like rave art, but uh, for creating kind of like a platform for conversation between artists and scientists um, and using that as sort of like a scientific communication tool. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I didn't, uh, I didn't really have anything to prepare beyond the 20 minutes beyond that. But if anyone has any questions or if you want to chat about something, I'd be, if you have questions about microbial dyeing, um, I would be down to chat about it, but yeah. Oh, am I the only one in this room? Oh, hi. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so why don't you um, tell us what a bioreactor is and how it will help you scale up your production? Yeah, so when you make microbial dyes, you can culture something very easily in a Petri dish, which essentially like uh, looks like a... Um, it's like a jello shot for microbes and you adjust the jello shot That's or the amazing. agar or the media <laughs> with whatever nutrients it needs for the bacteria to thrive. Um, so right now this is made by using, uh, for the bacteria S. marcescens. Um, and I think the red protein is called, pro pro I'm so bad at remembering names. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of it at all. Pro Protogiasin, there we go. Which is the red protein that, um, you know, dyes the fabric. Um, but to, when you have a bioreactor, that means you can kind of scale up your culture, essentially, you know, liquid culture, and then having a bioreactor, you have probes that can measure um, either in like a closed system um, to measure kind of like the rate of growth um, or anything else that's happening within that system. And then you can also set it, some systems that get more complex, you know, have a feeding sort of, uh, yeah, feeding function. Uh, you can add all sorts of different things to it. I am kind of a very simple girl. I just want to make sure that it's growing well. And then I just want to capture the data for fun, even though it might be pretty linear. I've heard that you can get really interesting results by taking like random environmental, uh, just jugs of water, like just in environmental samples, like jugs of water, mud, like you can get some really cool uh, data from that just by putting it in a jar and sticking a bunch of probes in there. Um, but yeah, I kind of want to have this live visual output of like what is kind of happening in there. And then I see a question of where can we see the 
cool touch designer mm -hmm. output. I have a I have a, a a link I can share later or that I can share along. Um, but essentially, I yeah put it. The serial data was captured um, in touch designer, and then yeah, I had one sort of like display window that was the sort of like object that reacted to um, acidity and temperature and a few other outputs as well or in readouts as well and then um, the other one just showed kind of the data that was happening and then I displayed them on CRTs because I am an artist <laughs> um, and it was, it was a little <laughs> extra but I'm hoping to like uh, yeah just calibrate it to display really interesting art for brewing kombucha or now uh, what would the output or artistic output look like for brewing uh, paint? Have you looked at Power Reactor, the Raspberry Pi based Power Reactor? I haven't, but I will definitely check it out. Um, I found sometimes I'm like the, the world of uh, open hardware can be really overwhelming. And with uh, <laughs> this, this shield, I just like picked it and I stuck with it. Um, but I will definitely take a look because yeah, open science hardware and open hardware definitely have a lot of really exciting uh, measurement tools for scientific research. Yeah. What to, what other uh, colors can you get with bacterial dyes? Oh, man, you can get. OK, so one we're trying to revive right now is called J. Lividum. And I believe I could be wrong. I believe it comes from a glacier uh, and it gives off the color like like violet. I think it's called the protein's called violacine. I could be wrong. Uh, and then the oh yeah, and then to make a crude pigment extraction, you can just like scrape off the goop that grows in the petri dish, mm -hmm. and you put it in some like ethanol and a bit of water, like seventy percent ethanol, thirty percent water. And you just violently like vortex or shake the tube, mm -hmm. uh, and then it all breaks apart. Um, oh, the one thing you have to really worry about though is as the sort of like uh, membrane debris sinks to the bottom, you have to like purify it, which I need to work on too, is like a low cost purification system so that you don't get any like bacterial encapsulation like floating around because it can cause like an ugly rash apparently. Um, right. Yeah. So that's like one. So I, if I'm going to dye a bunch of shirts for people, I have to make sure uh, to develop uh, testing methods to make sure no one gets an ugly rash. Because yeah. I think they're really cool. Like, I, I love these bacterial dyes. They're really amazing. But I think when the average person hears the word bacterial dyes, they don't know really yeah. what to expect from that, right? Yeah, I think <laughs> the better word is like chromoprotein. Like, you could just mm. feel, oh, like these organic chromoproteins. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it needs like, it, the reason why I kind of want to, um, brew it on the scale of like a craftsperson. So not just in a Petri dish, but having like a bioreactor to dye a hundred shirts is just like, I just want to see how the general public kind of reacts to it rather than like bacterial pigments are well known within the bioarts community. I've been like part of the bioarts community for around like 10 years organizing and stuff. I know it's a thing. I know people are doing it, but I kind of really want to push it further. I want to see like, I don't know, like my aunties and uncles <laughs> wear it as well, who are like unfamiliar yeah. with it. Um, but yeah. Cause I think like a lot of times you see these sam like see bacterial dyes as samples, like you're mm -hmm. showing them, right? Like I haven't yeah. seen that many projects that use them in at a large, in scale. A large scale. Yeah. 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 And, and, it, and it makes sense. I think there's a few companies right now that are doing it on a larger scale and it makes mm -hmm. sense because like you need like larger investment, like it's not worth it otherwise to kind of do it, but mm -hmm. I kind of want to see if it's possible to do it on like a craft based scale. I think yeah. there's like an open source bacterial dye cookbook. Mm -hmm. Am I thinking of the right thing? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I feel like I heard something like, about that where a bunch of different kinds of uh, bacterial dyes, there's a bunch of recipes out there. Oh yeah, no, there's so many protocols out there. Um, the thing is I didn't come, like I used to have like a whole color wheel, like a stock of a whole color wheel, um, but I also just moved to Asia and specifically Japan. And I 
was very weary about kind of like bringing uh, plasmids in or like mm -hmm. any other kind of mater biological material. So um, yeah, but we, we do want to expand our color wheel for sure. We're just kind of working with what we have and then we're just trying to uh, reach out to different communities. If you have any, you know, pigment producing bacteria or organisms, you want to send them to Bio Club Tokyo. It'd be <laughs> nice. I think um, this is also a part of open source that I wanted to touch on of also uh, an aspect of um, traditional crafting and craftsmanship. Mm -hmm. um, even though a lot of times we don't call this open source, a lot of this knowledge is open source. It's very yeah. much shared across generations, across mentors and mentees. Uh, and it's a really great way to think about that existence of like uh, natural dyeing protocols mm -hmm. or like that is most commonly shared through shared knowledge. And yeah. that is open source, which is a really interesting angle to like kind of re rethink what like to open reframe source open be, source, reframe it yeah. as being beyond just tech. Yeah. Like we love tech, we love boards, but something <laughs> like this of like experimenting with dying is a very much an open source process. And, and then it may be, because I, I know this is something that 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 I've heard you talk about before. Maybe you want to share a little bit about your process in um, mixing art, craft, science, technology, and open source. Like I know you've been spending a lot of time gathering all of these skills, and it's like been a long road for you to get where you are and be able to produce all of these amazing things. So, do you want to talk a little bit about that process of being an artist and a technologist and a scientist? Yeah, so growing up, I was in a low resource household, but my uncle was like a hardware hacker. Um, he like encouraged me to use open source software all the time. So that's kind of where I became familiarized um, with the, the community and the tool sets. Um, and then I realized that the tools and ingredients and things I wanted were like really expensive, but there were shortcuts around it very long shortcuts uh often, like, you know it took me 10 years to build a synthesizer from like different modules from different communities um but yeah i think it's very fruitful because if something like breaks i kind of now know how to repair it like you know a sewing machine breaks through my experience of you know art and technology and growing up with open source uh hardware and software like i can now figure out how to fix my sewing machine um and then there's like, yeah, I don't know. And then now I'm, re I feel so lucky to have like, um, I know there's five minutes left, but I feel really lucky to have like <laughs> met the open source uh, hardware community because there's like, now I'm reaching out to communities that are not open source and they like love gatekeeping and closed doors, which is another conversation. Then sometimes I'm okay with gatekeeping, um, but it, it, has made me really thankful about the skills that I've learned through the open source community on like repairing um, and yeah, kind of knowing how to be better with machines. I know that sounds really weird in this community, but there's like a lot of like studios that sometimes I go into and people will literally just like forcibly break machines or like strip things. And I'm just like, whoa, like I don't understand <laughs> the, this. Yeah. This like like they don't understand how to like work with technology or work with machines in the same way. Yeah. Um, I guess like a community and a tool that I've really fallen in love with recently is right here. Sorry, there's like shit on it I and mean, stuff on it. So this is like a, a record lathe. So it's like, I think from the 1960s or 70s in this particular model is the Presto 6N. Um, I built this wooden part, but I did not build this. This is cast aluminum and essentially you uh, have a audio source. Um, it's it has a mono cutting head, and then it goes through an amplifier, and then it goes into the head of the record lathe, and it has this feed screw that it goes along as it plays, and you can put a piece of polycarbonate down, and essentially in real time you can make a record. And you know this this is kind of like a a whole community in itself. But what mm -hmm. I love about the uh, the ability to make records is like, you know, um, the Tungara frogs in Panama, like we had record, we had a recording of them. And when um, there was sort of this um, action that had a lot of like, I don't like, I don't know, this action needed funding. 
uh, in Panama. And so we raised money by selling the records of the frogs that are like native to that area. Um, and I thought that was really cool. And I, you know, maybe this machine isn't like uh, open source, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, there's a lot of like crossover. Sorry, I'm being so like on so many tangents, but yeah. No, we love it. No, love that's it. great. And like ever, all these things are connected. And once you start to be curious about machines and processes and communities, it, like one thing leads to another. And that's what I think is really so much fun about your work. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think without open source, I would hardware and growing up with that kind of community, I, it would be harder for me to operate this record lathe. Uh, just it's a very intimidating machine. Uh, and then, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, helped me be a lifelong learner. So where can people, if they want to follow your work, if they want to know more about Gabo Studio, if they want to see how these shirts um, come to come into being or look at your awesome jade carving work or any of that, how, where can people find you? Uh, on Instagram. Sorry, I, I don't use Mastodon. I, I need to join. It's just like there's so many tools and social media platforms, but it's A underscore underscore G-A-B-O. I really want to somehow migrate off of uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, it seems like we <laughs> have lost Ananda. <laughs> um, but... They are amazing. You should follow them. We'll drop their information in the chat. Um, and you can find them online. You can find them online. Um, <laughs> Gabo migrated out of this out of the time continuum. It's true. It happens. Um, but incredible work. Great to keep track of. Always doing interesting things. Uh, it's honestly just a very. Oh, we're back. To Hi, sorry, a uh, really bad internet in this place. Yeah, you can uh, you can find me on a underscore underscore gabo uh, on Instagram or uh, gabo dot studio, and that's my website. Amazing. Amazing! Thanks so much, Nanda. Is there anything you any message you would like to leave the live stream viewers with as we as we depart into our afternoon? Yeah, I mean, keep supporting open source hardware and open source software platforms like looking at all the new tech releases it's like kind of scary how things are amalgamating and getting all weird i don't know it's just it just feels weird and we're going into a dark time and we got to keep this movement strong very true yeah. <laughs> amazing thank you so much ananda thank you. so good to see you good to see you we'll talk to you soon <laughs>